Okay, today we're going to do something that's not exactly strength of materials, but it's something a lot of my students wonder about, so I thought it was worth uh, perhaps talking about. We all know what pi is. It's 3.14159265353, whatever. It goes on forever because it's irrational. You ever wonder where that number actually comes from? You know, you punch it into your calculator, a lot of calculators have a pi button, and you can get this number to whatever precision you need, or you can go on the internet on my computer there and you can get it to millions or even now trillions of decimal places. But where does this come from? How do we actually know that's the value of pi? Um, you could do something like you could measure a circle, measure the circumference, and measure the uh, uh, diameter if you wanted, and take the ratio of the two, but that's not very accurate. So I thought it might be worth talking about how uh, people have figured this out, figured this number out over the years. This is probably going to take more than one video, but we'll get started here. Um, the first person we know of who made a really good attempt at it was Archimedes, who was famous for a lot of things. And you've got to remember, they're, they're at a time when they don't have any calculators, they don't have any precision equipment of any kind, and so they're doing this all by hand. And what he thought was, if you take a circle and you divide it into uh, equal segments, you can draw a polygon. Let's see if we can do this here. You can draw a polygon such that the, the ends of the polygon, the corners here, are the radius. And the radius on this circle is one. One whatever. Units, inches, miles, furlongs, whatever makes you happy. Uh, meters. That's called an inscribed polygon. Okay? In English, that's what it's called. And then he realized you could draw another one where instead of the, the polygon meeting the circle at the corners, you could do this in the middle. And so he made another one. I'm going to go ahead and draw this a different color. I don't know if this will show up on video or not. Oops. Okay, there you go. Now that's not perfectly accurate, but the idea is that the blue polygon touches right here at the, the center of each of these angles. Okay? Now it's fairly easy to figure out what the length of that outside that polygon is. So we'll do the inscribed one. This one, by the way, is called a circumscribed polygon. So the blue one is called a circumscribed polygon. It goes on the outside of the circle. Well, for the inscribed, I'll just call that in for right now, if I know that that's 1 and that's 1, so I've got an uh, equilateral triangle there, and that's some angle theta, then that length right there is also L over 2 plus L over 2 right there and there. All right? We can use basic trig to figure out what L over 2 is. And we can write down an expression here, and we can say L is 2 sine theta over 2. This is for the, I'll call this the inscribed one. For the circumscribed one, we're going to do almost the same thing, except instead of that being 1, this length will be 1. So switch to blue here. I guess C for circumscribed. It's two, and I believe it's tangent. Make sure I get this right. Okay. So now we know how to add how, what the length of, of that uh, uh, segment is there and that segment. Well, you don't have to be too bright to figure out that if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six segments, that for this case, the length of the inscribed polygon is 6 times L, and the length of the circumscribed polygon is 6 times this L. All right? Well, as, I get, as I've used more and more and more of these inscribed polygons and circumscribed polygons, the, those two lengths correspond close, more, more and more closely to the circumference of this circle. I know the radius is 1, that means the diameter is 2, that means the circumference is pi times the diameter, 2 pi. So, the way you work this out, I'm going to have to erase some stuff here. I'm going to erase this. As you can say, that 
pi is in between the inner and outer one of those. And I've got to get my notes here. Okay. It's n. I'm sine theta over 2. There and n tangent theta over 2 there. Now, in order to make this work, you have to know what theta is. And that's what theta is. Now, this is kind of cheating because in the way we would do this now, we would really say this. Since our calculators all work using radians, it's kind of cheating because you need to know pi to calculate pi. It's kind of a circular uh, thing to work out. But for our purposes here, this is close enough. This is, this is an okay place to start. Um, we don't have to pretend we don't know what pi is. We already know what it is. The only downside of this is this doesn't converge very fast. You don't get very accurate answers unless n gets really big. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to erase that and I'm going to show you what happens as n gets big. Now, the thing that makes this important is you can make your estimate of pi as accurate as you want to. All you've got to do is make n big enough. right? And with a computer, it's trivial. With somebody sitting writing with a stylus, maybe on a clay tablet, or writing with chalk on a, a piece of slate, or maybe even paper and pencil, this is a pretty serious calculation to have to make. You've got to be able to evaluate trigonometric functions, and you may or may not have uh, trig tables, things like that. Certainly Archimedes didn't have anything like this. So his estimates got better as his life went on, but they never got good by modern standards. The nice part about this, though, is you can make this arbitrarily accurate. You can make it as accurate as you want to just by making n bigger. That makes it an algorithm. That's what makes it really important. So I'll show you what... Uh, Let's see, let's do it this way. I'll do the inscribed and the circumscribed estimates for pi here. Okay. Now, the, the example I just drew up there, the polygon had six sides. So they're n equals six, and I'll just write these out quickly. So just a few decimal places. Okay, so for pi or n equals 6, you get pretty bad estimates. Well, you can have an average. You, can, you know it's in between those two, so it might make sense to average those two. You can do that, and you get something quite a bit closer. Now, that's not very good still, but that's not very big either, so this isn't too bad. Um, if you double the number of sides, you get 3.106 there and 3.215 there. That's pretty clear. Those are on opposite sides of pi. Pi lies in between those. And so if you average them, you get 3.161. Well, this is still a manageable number of sides, and that's really not too bad. Okay? Now, it's not accurate enough for modern purposes, but for ancient Greece, that wasn't bad. So if we double the number of sides again to 24, we get these numbers. And again, you can see that the inscribed and circumscribed polygons straddle pi. Pi is bigger than that and less than that. And if you take the average again, okay, there's what you get. Now that's not equal to that by any stretch, but that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And if we want to go farther, we can just keep making n bigger. Right? This is the first really good way to figure out pi. Now, I'm out of time here, so in the next video, I'll show you another way to do this.